Hey everyone, in today's photo shoot behind the scenes, we are going to be testing out the 50mm and the 85mm lens to see the differences when it comes to portrait photography. So for today's photo shoot, we have Madeline as our model, Lydia is doing her makeup, and she is also wearing some outfits from Girlcon Retro, who is my friend from high school who owns a vintage clothing store. And I really wanted to use some of her pieces to shoot with because they are just so gorgeous. So I'll link everyone on Instagram down below if you guys want to check them out. So we're going to be doing a bunch of different portrait tests with these two lenses. I'm going to take the exact same photo on both of these. I'm shooting on a full frame camera, by the way, the Canon 5D Mark IV, um, just so we can see the differences side by side. The first shot I wanted to capture was a mid-length close-up sitting in the long grass. The 50mm shot has a tiny bit of distortion affecting Madeline's face and the hard line in the background of the grass meeting the trees at the top of the frame is quite defined and distracting. That shot actually really suits you as well, like the colour and everything. <laughs> The 85mm shot has no distortion on her face and to me personally, I find this shot is a more flattering portrait at this distance. Comparing the two together, the 85 has a more dreamy feel to the photo where Madeline really stands out and pops from the background, compared to the 50 where the grass and location look a little bit more distracting. The line in the top of the background of the grass meeting the trees on the 85 is also less defined and thus less distracting. And then do you want to sit maybe with your legs so you can have them kind of up? We took a few more shots sitting in the grass where I was framing the 50 and 85 to look the same. Here you can see how similar you can make these lenses look depending on how far away you're standing and how you're angling your camera to your subject. The 85 photos have slightly more background to foreground separation but only slightly at these angles. Do you want to maybe you could like lean on a hand, whichever one's more comfortable. In this second portrait sitting in the grass, you can really see how someone's face shape changes on these two focal lengths. Again, the 50 has slightly more distortion in the face and the 85 flattens the face that little bit more. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do a full body shot on both lenses and I pick somewhere where I know we're going to get some bokeh in the background just to see the difference between that as well as we've got these beautiful trees and leaves in the back. So these are full body shots but you can be a little bit more creative okay. if you feel like it. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, I love that. Maybe you could do like a pretend walkie thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think towards me. Oh, that looks so pretty there. Okay, I'll do the same thing on this one. The 50 seems to be struggling a little bit more to focus. With a very busy background in these full body shots, again, I love how the 85 makes your subject stand out. In the 50mm shot, Madeline is a little bit lost against all the details. Here's also a 100% zoom on the bokeh so we can see the size difference while I was standing in the same spot shooting at f1.2. This spot is so pretty as well. It looks like a magical forest or something. <laughs> it does. Yeah. That's so nice. If it's uncomfortable, you can like shift around a bit as well. Yeah, I like that. I like that with your leg cluster, that's nice. In these portraits leaning against the tree, I captured a shot I loved on the 50 when Madeline moved her hands up. 
I was able to take a quick step back to be able to capture the entire frame without cropping out her hands. On the 85, I would have had to take a few steps back to be able to frame her entire arms and possibly missing out on the shot because of it. Alright, then I think, can I get you to sit on that little patch there? Next up, we took some extreme close-up shots. Love the makeup. I know, it's so pretty. You did such a good job. Up. I feel like I'm invading your personal space. <laughs> I edited all the photos from this shoot with my San Francisco Lightroom preset, which gives images a blue and pastel toned look. The location we were shooting in was very vibrant and green, so I wanted to tone that down for this photo shoot and give the images a cooler feel. I'll leave a link for the preset down below if you're interested in taking a look. So I'm finding it really hard to get sharp focus on the eyes with the 50, so I'm going to take a few more. I feel like I need to take double the amount of shots on the 50 to get a really sharp one compared to the 85. Um, but that would come down to the specific lens that I'm using rather than the focal length that I'm using. Like I mentioned, while this is a more brand specific issue, I was really struggling to catch focus on the 50mm lens. The 85 though was focusing without too many issues and I had a higher ratio of in focus shots. Here we can clearly see the difference the focal length makes on the shape of your subject's face. The 50 has a slight distorted look which pulls on the forehead and makes the face look a little bit thinner. The 85 looks more true to life and in my opinion is one of my favourite lenses to capture this exact close-up composition with because of that. If one of them's not sharp, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that looks so good. If the sun's too much, you can close your eyes or like put your hand up or anything. It'll look cool. Shooting in direct harsh sunlight, both lenses worked great and produced great color rendition straight out of the camera. In this situation though, I have two things I wanted to point out. The first one is that it's really nice. 50 mil shots, you can clearly see the location we're shooting in. You can see plenty of roses in the background and the flowers are fairly defined to be able to make out what they are. In the 85 shot, you can only see a tiny amount of flowers, and due to the extreme compression and separation, the location we're shooting in ends up looking pretty lame in the final photo. It's really just a brown, greenish blob. So I'm gonna shoot these portraits at f2.8 so we can see the bokeh difference and the sharpness difference between the two lenses. And we've got some like roses and leaves in the background so that would make some really good bokeh for the shots. So I think maybe this one with your legs crossed. The second point I wanted to bring up that I experienced while shooting in this location is that there physically wasn't enough room for me to be able to move back and capture a landscape orientation photo on the 85mm so you could see more of the location. I was as far back as I could go and was only able to capture a portrait orientation mid-length close-up of our model. That looks really cool. For our next shots at f2.8, the same thing happened again where I was able to capture a full body landscape shot on the 50, but wasn't able to do the same thing on the 85 due to lack of space. Love it. Also, by bringing up the aperture to 2.8 instead of 1.2 on the 85, the flowers in the background are still quite blobby looking and undefined compared to the 50. Oh, I love that. It's really cute.
I ended up loving what the 50mm shots look like so much in this location that I ended up taking just a few extra shots on that. So since the sun is blaring right now, the last test that I want to do is a lens flare test. So we're going to shoot in the brightest backlight possible and try to get as much lens flare to see how the shots look different. Last but not least, I shot some backlit shots without a lens hood to see the difference in lens flares and if there was any focusing issues. The 50mm had 16 out of 28 photos in focus and the 85mm had 25 out of 35 photos in focus. While the 85 has a bigger and more washed out lens flare on the bottom third of the image, the portrait itself still has quite a lot of contrast, compared to the 50mm straight out of the camera where the entire image looks very washed out. So those are the tests that we are going to do with both these lenses today. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments to let me know which lens you prefer and for what reasons as well. For me personally, I tend to go for the 50 a little bit more as I do like that tiny bit of distortion in my photos. If you guys have watched my channel, you would know that the 35mm is my favourite lens. So for me, the 50 wins, even though the 85 is still such a gorgeous lens, especially for close-up portrait. Thank you so much for watching. I make new videos every single Wednesday, so I will see you guys all next time. Bye!